Hey, what's going on? Yes, it's been a long time since I wore this shirt. I saw it in the closet and I said, why the hell not? I love this shirt. I got it in the storage unit years and years ago. So, I was thinking, it's 2015, and how do you start a business with no money down? Is it the same as it was in 2014? And the answer would be, no, it's not. One of the reasons that I am an information junkie and I pay so much attention to trends and I read things that are not directly related to making money is because the environments that are being created now are the pathways to future profits. And you know, take example, I was a storage auction guy. I got out of the storage auction business and I looked at the future. When I started, the environment that exists now did not exist, but I saw it coming. And so I want you to be, listen to me very carefully. If you are jumping to the environment when it's already ripe, you're too late. And that's one of the reasons that it's so hard for people to make money on eBay. There are some people who are killing it. But I noticed the number of coaches, the groups of eBay, Amazon, there's there's hundreds, if not thousands of these groups and coaches because it's so challenging to make money on those platforms. Not impossible. There's someone who will see this video and then six months later, they'll be like, I don't know what the hell Glenn was talking about. I'm making six figures. But the thing is, we all see the world through our myopic view. The person who's doing six figures, because, you know, I've seen the trend. The people who seem to do the best with Amazon FBA frequently have jobs. And what that means is they have income to live on while they turn the inventory till they get to a point where they can start taking payouts. Whereas if you are broke dick Danny with no job and you need all that money. So if you turn some money, you got to pull it out to pay the mortgage or to buy baby Joe some diapers. Your business can never really catch traction because you're taking the oxygen, i.e. money from it. So that's one of the things that I see frequently, frequently, because they already have money and more than likely have credit and they're probably using credit cards. You know, it's like, well, I don't use credit bullshit. You, <laughs> I mean, you can just tell, you can just tell. And I'm not saying that's wrong because if it works for you, it works for you. But everyone doesn't have the same situation. Now let's talk about environments. I saw what was going to happen with publishing and there's some more stuff that's going to happen with publishing. The new wave of publishing is about, well, the future wave. I wouldn't say the new, the future wave is about maybe two, three years away. And it's going to be people such as myself who forego the economic benefit. Yeah, you put books on Amazon, you follow a certain path, you take certain courses, you will make money with Amazon. But the problem is at some point it's going to peak out. And if you go to the Kindle board, so you go to the writing groups, you hear all these people. It's like Amazon changed the algorithm. Uh, Kindle Unlimited did this. And all of a sudden, they were making X. And then all, their money got cut in half or their money was cut 75%. And it's just like all third-party platforms behave the same at some point, broke dick Danny. They do. They have to. And this is the reason why. The environment's like this. Third party platform starts. Okay, we, we don't have a viable product, so we got to give this shit away for free. So we're going to give it away to free to grow our user base. And once our user base gets to a point where we can start extracting money out of it, we're going to change the algorithm. We're going to change the policies. Not mad at them because they built that platform. You know, congratulations. Wonderful. Awesome. But the thing is, if you are making your money from that platform and they do one of these changes and you were used to the way that platform operated, it's going to blow your mind and open up your wallet and take cash out your bank account. You're going to lose money because you're overly dependent upon that platform. Now, let's get back to environments. Once again, going with publishing, the people who are doing the work now who are taking the blows, going through the hard work, building their platforms, building their followings. And three to four years now, when these new technologies and things pop out, they're going to be able to make money. And they're not going to have to share with anyone. They're not going to have to have a split. They're going. To, but the thing is, building that platform is hard. Now, let's talk about making no money for a long period of time. And yeah, I said that correctly because I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
Because if you're going to start a business with very little investment, the chances are it's going to take quite a bit of time for you to get to the point that you can extract cash out of that business. That's just reality. But the thing is, today, once again, environment. If you start your business now, if you create your business now and go for those two, three, four, five years while the environment's changing, build experience, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. I'm actually telling you, you shouldn't spend a lot of money until you get some seasoning, until you get some experience. Essentially, today, at home tonight, you can come up with a rudimentary business plan and start your business tomorrow. And more importantly, what's more important than money is experience. Experience is everything today. Experience, number one, and connections and networks are number two. If you have enough experience, you don't need money. Let me say that again. If you have enough experience, you do not need money. You can create money from your experience. And this is the problem that many people have. They do not want to pay dues, groom themselves, build something, delay gratification, anything that does not satisfy that immediate need for attention, a like, um, money, anything that stimulates that hind brain that makes it go, ooh, wee, that feels so good, ooh, massage me some more, then all of a sudden they're like, I don't wanna hear that. And that's why you have bought several programs, art, you've bought several courses, art, and you still are nowhere near where you want to be because you keep trying to leap over that grooming process. It's like trying to run before you learn how to walk. And many people are like beating up on the floor of their fist. I'm trying to go, but my legs are failing me. My legs are failing me. And essentially, it's going to take time. So here it is, 2015. You can start a business tonight and you can start getting those business lessons and grooming yourself and doing this while you have that full time job or while you have another business and devote an hour a day to growing that business and look at it from a long term perspective. Now, this is something else. Once you get in business, you will learn things that you will never, ever learn in any other way. I don't care how good your business plan is. I don't care how great your mentors are. Some shit's going to happen. Something's going to change. You, you're doing something. You're making money. And then all of a sudden, this company creates a better product that solves two of the customer's problems. Your product solves one, and they make it faster. They make it sexier. They make it easier. And they make it cheaper. What does that mean to your company? Dead company walking. That's reality. Dog eat dog, cat eat dog, cat, big fish eats little fish. That's the way the world operates. But so many people just, I want to set it and forget it and just make money while I'm on the beach drinking a tropical drink. Fucking idiocy. It's just fuckery. So another thing you'll learn by starting a business is that conditions consistently change. eBay is nothing like it was when I started in the 90s on it. I mean, I'm glad I got to experience what I call the golden era of eBay, when you can make money and they pretty much left you the fuck alone. That's gone. And the thing is, it's part of the evolution of business. It's part of the evolution of how this thing we call life works. Now, if you start your business, whatever it is, and what's the thing, everyone wants to start an online business. I'm gonna give you some math here. I'm gonna tell you something that you don't wanna hear. Everyone is all stuck up on, hey, all of these businesses are started by teenagers and freshmen in college. Nope. Consistently, and this holds true, and if you don't believe me, do the research. The average age of first-time entrepreneurs is roughly 44 to 48 years of age. Why? Because at that point, they've got enough stuff where they can start something. They have enough assets or enough equity in their house where they can take a, a shot at it. These Internet entrepreneurs who go from the college dorm room to billionaire status are unicorns in the forest. You see about them, you hear about them, but they're very, very fucking rare. So you're basing your expectations on extremely rare shit and wonder why you're failing. Now, average age, once again, is 40 something. Average time to the first million. First million, not collective million, first million is roughly 11 years. Now let's go back to what I just told you. If you start now, part-time, 
that part-time experience building counts in the 11 year mark. So say you have a job or say you have kids, maybe your kids are four years away from graduating high school and then they're gonna get out and then you're gonna have all kinds of free time. If you start with these four years now, and now then you jump into your business, it's gonna feel more comfortable. You're gonna have more confidence because you know what you're doing. You've made money, you've talked to customers, but everyone is trying to go from ashy to classy just like that. And then when it doesn't happen, they look at that as an atypical event when it's actually a natural consequence of what they're doing. You've been lied to if you think your success is gonna be immediate, fast, quick, hurry, lovely, and sweet. It's not. It's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be twisting like that little Mimi where you know many people think success is like the straight arrow when really it looks like a spaghetti noodle. It's like here and it's gonna go under here. That's the reality. But if you start now and you start building and you start learning and also you reduce your risk by starting with no money, starting part-time, if it goes sideways like my first five businesses were complete wipeouts, but I had a job. I was in the military at the time. The first five businesses I started, I was in the military. So when they went bad, I still ate. I still had a place to stay. I was still making money. But when you are looking at, you're going to go from no experience, no money to building, quote, this million dollar business. You're a fucking idiot. You should not even think like that. You should think I have no experience. I don't know what I'm doing. So if I can make $10,000 extra this year, that's a win. If you're looking at it that way, once you make the 10, then you can make 20,000, then you can make 30,000. So, hey, you start today in five years and in your fifth year, you make $50,000 from that business. That's a win. Let's talk about other things that hold people back from starting a business. I hate my job. I want to quit my job. My boss hates me. Nobody likes me. I work with idiots. Okay. What are you doing about it? If you're not doing something systematically, incrementally every day to get you out of there, chances are you're not ever leaving unless you're fired or laid off. And many people typically move towards something or run away from something. Very few people sit down and consciously say, I'm going to start a business for the love of it. They're either running away from something or running towards something. There's usually a cataclysmic event that is the genesis for this breakdown. So with this information, you want to start a business? Start one part time, an hour a day and fail and learn from the lessons. It's like, you know, you've got your pads and stuff on and your helmet and your roller skating and someone knocks you down. But since you got your knee pads on, your elbow pads, your helmet, it's like, OK, I'm a little embarrassed, but I'm OK. And that's what you do by starting your business this way. Now, let's talk about making money, earning money and stacking money. In the storage auction business, we had this term called trading dollars. Essentially, someone would spend 600 bucks for a unit. Once they sell everything, they made 650. So you account for the labor and gas, they made no money. They traded dollars. They had another $600 to reset and buy more units, but they did not make this lovely thing called profit. That's where many of you are. I see this with a lot of FBA sellers. I see this with some eBay people. They're just trading money because there's not enough profit to break free to the next level. Now, what I just said is very, very important. If you've got to borrow a lot of money to grow your eBay, or Amazon business, it's telling you you're not making enough money to grow organically. My eBay business grew organically. There were no loans. Parlay, you know, use that antiquated term, parlay the first unit into the second, the third, and just grew organically. No loans, no credit cards. So how do you do that? Sell shit that people want. And this is the thing that really messes with a lot of entrepreneurs. You have this vision. You have this thing that you want to give people. You want to sell it. You know it's good. But due to the hind brain, they don't want your stuff because it doesn't fulfill some emotional need. And you're like, I want to sell it to them. I want to give it to them. I want to make it their life. And you know it will work really, really well. And they're just like, whatever. I'm going to watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm going to watch this, this uh, chipmunk screw this squirrel because it's very exciting. They have no use for you. 
even though your product is top notch and it works. You know, you're going like, what? Because people crave fuckery. This is why these infomercial works. This is why QVS is uh, in business. They sell these things that appeal to emotional components to, the pe to human existence. So if you have something and you know it works and it's good, you can't sell it straight up. You've got to figure out what part of your business or your product or your service is going to emotionally connect with the end user the customer or whoever. And if you don't do that, I don't care how good you're. And this is something that I told a writer years ago, because many people were really upset when Zane like took off and it was just like, what she writes is trash. And I was just like, she writes and she serves a market. I don't think she writes trash. And I also was writing dirty stuff. So that was another reason I didn't think that. And then I said, OK, you're saying this stuff about her. Well, why don't you take your well-polished product and promote it like she does? And the guy sent me an email. He said, what you said in that group just changed my life. And he went out and did it. And he lived as a full-time offer for five years. So it's a lot more than just the product or service. You have to know who your customer is. You have to know who you're dealing with. Like, I know 30 Days to 2500 is one of the most awesome products I've ever created. But it's not instant. Typically, it takes people 60 to 90 days to go through the program. And when you start talking 30 days, past 30 days, people are like, whoa, what do you mean? I'm going to be in this year long program? Who's got time for that? I, I, no, no, no. I, I got shit to do. Learn some stuff for a year? Work very hard for a year and not make a lot of money? Are you crazy? Who does that? Who does that? Successful people do it all the time. Some people are apprenticed for years. One of the longest residencies in the medical profession is that of pathology. It's like seven years. They are uh, studying under people for seven years before they get to be the doctor. Seven years. After four years of medical school, maybe one year of fellowship, plus four years of undergrad. So typically the pathologist who's ready to rock out is close to 40. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they make a lot of money. Uh, surgery is another long one. Anything that you look at that is durable economically, it usually took a long time to build. And that's the problem that many of you are facing, Art. You're facing this. I got to have it now. I got 30 days and uh, I'm doing another, co another course right now that I think serves a need. And as expected, many people didn't sign up for it. It's disruptive money and it's talking about money management. Manage your money or your money's going to manage you. There's a lot of people, oh, I don't want to hear about how to handle money. No, no. You know, if you can give me some shit where I could parlay, you know, my 50 bucks into like $3,000 residual income and I don't have to do shit. Yeah, I'm there. But like, you know, uh, working, a grooming, apprenticeship, being a scholar and studying and working hard with little to no reward. Now, fuck you, man. Fuck you, Glendon. I ain't got time for that. My mama told me I was special. And special people don't do that. And this is why many of you are not successful. Because you hop and skip and jump from this thing to that thing. And then you look at that person who did the hard work. Who stuck with it year after year. Then all of a sudden, they got the nice house. They're driving the Ferrari. And you're saying bullshit like, it must be nice. Motherfucker got lucky. And all the things that unsuccessful people tell themselves to make themselves feel good about their lack of proper choices. This is what goes on. So if you want to make money with no money down, you're going to have to pay in what's called sweat equity. You're going to have to work your ass off with little to no reward. Yeah, I'll tell you that. And a lot of people are like, no, 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 no. Don't tell them the truth. And see, I'm talking to you, your front brain and I'm talking to your hind brain because what is going to happen is we go forward in this new economy if you do not start laying down some type of business model now because what i believe in is a perpetual business and that's why i got like 30 year goals 40 year goals because i'm not looking at social security i'm looking at creating some business creating some intellectual products that you know when i'm 80 years old i still got a check coming in what i saw with this was Curtis Mayfield, flat on his back, paralyzed from the neck down, I believe. Uh, he had some finger function. 
supporting his family because he created something years and years in advance of his unfortunate accident. So knowing that you can do this and you, you hear people like, well, I'm not a writer or when Curtis started, he wasn't a writer. When Prince started, he wasn't a writer. Prince taught himself. And this is a great example. He worked his ass off for years to get those skills that pay him now. He can walk around with a little afro and looking at people. And, you know, actually, I hear that people who really know Prince says he's actually very funny. I don't know because I don't know Prince, but I've studied the guy. I grew up in high school listening to him, international lover, you know, head. This guy took a lot of risk, which is another part of making money with no money down, taking risk, not being afraid to look foolish. <laughs> I love this shirt. When I pulled it out of the bag, I was like, I'm keeping this long time. I'm loving this long time. It, essentially, what you can do is get in business, any business. And this is another thing. People are looking for what I call turnkey business. You buy it, you turn the key, and you don't really do too much, and you make all this money. Those things exist. However, I've talked to people who've owned Subways. I've talked to people who own McDonald's. Their franchise is only as good as the operators. So even if you spend $1.2 million getting in, getting the franchise, and you don't put the proper people in place, you still could go out of business. Or essentially what McDonald's would do is take the franchise from you and move it somewhere else. That happens. It's rare because they put you through a rigorous application process before they let you get one. But what I'm trying to tell you in this long and convoluted way, there's no free lunch. There is no shortcuts to true long-term sustainable success. You keep hearing about this, and this is why I base, I feel fortunate to have been in the contract commercial office furniture business, I got to see a lot of business models. And there's so many ways that you can make money and serve people and build stuff. But everyone wants to do what I call sexy business. You know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And it sounds good. I don't care if I was hibernating or harvesting turtles that laid purple eggs and that made, oh, hey. Those turtles are laying those purple eggs. I got to get up at six and go harvest those eggs. If that was working and gave me the lifestyle I wanted, and more importantly, if I enjoyed hanging out with hibernating turtles, you're living the life. Also, another cute point that keeps people from starting the business. You want to be happy, Art. You just want to be happy. You don't know what fucking happiness is because you haven't invested in yourself long enough to actually know what makes you tick. You are using the prescribed accumulates of other people's dreams to decide if that's good happiness for you. Happiness may be working in a bakery. Happiness may be working with kids, but because those fields don't pay a lot of money, you can't go to your heart's path because you can only think, well, I must go play with these kids and I must be in this bakery and I must make money this way versus you thinking, damn, well, what I'll do is I'll start a school. And I'll hire people and I'll get to the point where everyone else is doing everything. And then I'll go in every day and play and teach the kids. See, you usually to get what you want, you have to help a lot of other people get what the hell they want. So when you do that, then you ultimately get what you want more frequently. But when it's all about you, was that Superman thing? I forget. I forget the song. But when it's all about you, you get marginal dividends. You get less. One of the reasons that I get here to talk shit and thanks to everybody that watches this channel is it serves last month 125,000 people. If it was serving 3,000, then those 3,000 people would be important, but I wouldn't be able to do this. So you got to serve a lot of people. You got to give a lot of people something. And that's one of the problems. And it, and it took me six years. And when I say that, people are like, that's a long time. As Miss Sally Mae Jones used to say, one of my neighbors when I was growing up, if you live long enough, you're going to be old. Meaning, the time's going to pass anyway, whether you're doing something constructive to make your life better or not. The time is going to pass. And that's why I said, here in 2015, you could start a business and you could start something and start making some money. And let's talk about that. Some money. Not balling. You got a Bentley, but it might be 50 bucks a month. That's a win. It might be 100 bucks a month. Many successful people, even in the internet space, 
started businesses that they lost money the first year. Lost money. And they stuck with it because they did their, they just knew the market was there. And they just did what they had to do to keep pushing. Like when I wrote story, you know, Making Money A to Z with self storage and auctions. I had did no market research, none. I knew the market was there based on experience. People would come to the auctions. We would play games with them because they didn't know what the hell they were doing. If I didn't have that experience, I never could have wrote that book. So you could work very hard for two or three years and not make a lot of money, but you can give yourself the gift of experience, wisdom, and foresight that it will start making money for you at some point. But you have to put in the work. And that's one of the things. And that's why I've kind of changed up my business model and how I do things because Many people come to this channel when their ass out, when the, you know, the dog is all up on their ass and they're like looking for a quick hit or a quick come up. And then I have to break the unfortunate news that typically your problem was a long term situation that's going to take a long term situation to get you out of it. And they don't want to hear that. It's like, hey, I want some ebook for five bucks that's going to solve my life. And actually, I do have one, but. I know I said that W word. I know y'all hate me fucking cussing. And when I say, because many people take the word work with more offense than they take fuck. It's like, yeah, you can say fuck all day. Work. I can't listen to you no more. I don't know who you are. I thought you were my homeboy. You talking about work, applied effort, sustainable long term effort with little to no reward. <sighs> I thought we were folk. I thought we were people. I'm looking for the quick come up. I'm looking for the hookup. I'm looking for the shortcut. I'm not looking for true success because I don't know what that looks like. I've never seen it before. And all I've seen are these lies and these facades. And that's what I want because I've been conditioned for fuckery. So when someone tells me the truth, I get offended and hurt because I've never heard it before. Art. I've been there. I know what it is. It's painful. It's like waking up from a long sleep with someone slapping you like, mm, fool, wake your ass up. And then when you wake up and when the stinging stops and you, your eyes clear and the stars will go away, you're like, oh, whoa, wait a minute. And I was in that situation. I'll tell you the truth here. If I didn't go through such a hard and long and arduous process of being homeless, going through a family alienation, I wouldn't know a lot of the stuff I know. I would have been spared, but I would be so stupid. I've got really great pattern recognition skills. That's why I can see where things are going. That's why I went to audio and video for my training because people don't read. 75% of people who buy books don't read them. That's a problem for me because I want you to buy my product and I want you to benefit. But if I know that you are not going to read it, why am I going to keep writing books that I know you're not going to read when I know that if I give it to you in a podcast or a video that most of you or more of you will consume it and benefit? That's what comes from research and experience. Many people like, well, audio books are never going to replace real books. I'm going to say at a point. We're going to get a bunch of, you know, and this is one of the things that I'm talking about the future. When you start creating your own products and solving these problems that come from having your own website and creating your own emailing list, you build up so much experience and knowledge that you make yourself so valuable. You're just like you're in the gym and it's like you're 168 pounds and then four years later you're 225 you got eight percent body fat and you are just like a freaking machine but it took the four years to get all of that and that's what i'm trying to tell you you can start a business today with little to risk no money or little money and start learning and getting benefits immediately but it's going to take time it's going to be a road it's going to be tough at times. It's going to be a journey, Art. It's going to be rough, but it's going to be worth it. So for those of you who made it to the end of this video, I got a deal for you. And I'm just going to leave it up. I'm going to give you a heck of a deal. Now I'm going to give you the original, which I said I think is the best course ever. Uh, it's $1,000 now. I'm going to make you a deal. Click, click, click. I'm going to make you some deals. Pick one. And you can start 
tonight on improving your life, improving your finances and gaining personal freedom. If you are bold enough and you care enough about your future, because what's coming is going to be so arduous as I did in uh, disruptive money today. If you have a car that's paid off, you pay all your bills and you have a generous surplus, like say you have a thousand fifteen hundred dollars after you pay all your bills, you, you're rich. I know you're going, no, 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 you're rich. So many people are so far from that position in life that they have to wait to get paid to do simple shit like buy groceries. If your car is paid off and you have surplus income at the end of the month, after all your bills are paid of a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, you are rich. You're not wealthy, but you're rich and you have the tools to become wealthy. You can become wealthy from that standpoint. But many people do this. They upgrade the car. They upgrade the house. They go ahead and get married to someone who's not mentally on the same financial path, who then starts spending this surplus money on furious bullshit. And the next thing you know, you are just like everyone else and struggling. And you sit in home and sometimes it's like, damn, I used to always have money. If I wanted to go to Hawaii, I'd just buy a ticket and go. What the fuck happened? You can have all that if you build it and you build your life that way. If you put together certain things, if you groom yourself, that's the tools. And I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, no, no, Glennon, no, no, you're not rich if you got. Yes, you are. You're rich because one thing that you don't have that most people do. The stress of not being able to pay their bills, the stress of too much month and not enough check. You know how stressful that is? Being poor is one of the most expensive things you can do in the United States of America. Most expensive. And that's where many people are. So here, I'm putting some deals up for you. And I'm going to tell you, if you take 30 days to 2500 and you go through the course and you do the lessons and, you know, this one time fee, you will have access to it forever and forever and forever for reals, for reals. And you do it and you go through the course and maybe the first time it doesn't stick and you go through it the second time, and the third time you will make way more money than you spent in less than a year. I guarantee it. You get your money back. So many people. I had a guy do 50,000 a month from that course. I had a guy do 100,000 a month. Now, these people had businesses and they were already established, but that's just to show you the potential of this course. And if that doesn't work for you, I highly encourage you to buy disruptive money. That is the linchpin. That's the, the, the beachhead. That's the foundation for everything that I do. It's the course that I'm putting up, put together for money management. It is pivotal that you learn how to manage your money or your money will always manage you. You'll be 80 years old and your money's still managing you. Making you, do you want to be your money's bitch? Seriously. Or do you want your money to be your servant versus you serving money? Many people serve money and don't know it. So if you, this is the deal. If you are low on the income, disruptive money, get that. It'll fix your financial house. If you're okay and you want to start making money, get 30 days to $2,500. It will change your life. And if you're really sexy, go for the full money, the hustler mindset project and make it happen. So that's the deal. All right. This is Glennon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later, Art, and whoever else happens to be hearing our conversation.